movie opens up in Katwe, a slum of Kampala, Uganda, where a 10-year-old girl, Fiona Mutesi, lives with her family. In her family, she has her mother, Naku, her sister, Knight, and two brothers, Richard and Brian. Fiona and Brian are compelled to sell maize for their family's daily expenses. Their father died at a young age and they have no house to live in and no property to dwell on. The family's goal is to just eat and live for the next day. Fiona and Brian are strictly instructed by Naku that they must sell the maize worth 1,000 shillings to return home. After Brian finishes his part of selling maize, he just hands his basket to Fiona and goes somewhere. On the other hand, we see Robert, a football coach and a talented engineer looking for a stable job. Despite his good marks in college, he's denied at job interviews as he does not have anyone in the higher ranks in politics. He teaches the kids of slums to play football because he thinks it's the only way they can improve their living standard. When some of the kids are afraid to play football, he suggests they play chess, as it will help them improve their intellect. The next day, when Brian once again leaves early by handing his basket to Fiona, she decides to track him. She secretly follows him and reaches a place where Robert is teaching the kids of slums to play chess. There, Fiona sees children happily playing and enjoying the porridge that Robert is providing them for free. While Fiona is looking at all this, Robert notices her and calls her inside. As soon as she enters, some of the children there start making fun of her. They call her a pig as she is smelling bad. When a boy teases her to her limit, she attacks and fights with him. Robert likes her fighting spirit and he offers a jug of porridge. He then takes her to another student, Gloria, and asks her to teach her the basics of chess to Fiona. Fiona is so intrigued by the game that she cleans herself up and arrives at the place the next day. Robert teaches the moves of chess, relating them to their daily life obstacles and instructs them on how to be safe from all the traps and possible defeats. Fiona and Brian are both very interested in the game, and they practice with their own kind of chessboard, even at night. Brian wins the match, and Fiona feels like she can never defeat a boy. After some days, Fiona starts getting better at chess and even defeats the boys in their training class. Robert carefully supervises her game and finds her playing some moves which he never taught her. Later, he asks her about where she learned the moves. Fiona replies that she learned it all by herself, as she does not know how to read books and extract ideas. Soon, the kids start asking Robert about when he'll take them to play against the rich boys in the city. Afterwards, Robert visits the office of Enoch Barumba, the chairman of the Chess Federation. He requests Barumba to allow his children to play in the Father Grimes tournament, happening soon. Barumba refuses his request, stating that only sophisticated children will be there and only pointing out that the slum children have no manners and discipline. However, Robert manages to convince him after promising to pay the registration fees of the kids. Following that, we see Robert playing football to collect some money for the chess tournament. Fiona and Brian also recognize him and cheer for him throughout the game. After the game, Robert directly visits Barumba's office and hands him the tournament fees for his kids. At Robert's home, his wife, Hope, finds out that he's been playing football for money. She gets angry at him because in the past, Robert had injured himself badly while playing football. Elsewhere, a coal shop owner tells Naku that an evil man is using her children for gambling. Upon hearing this, Naku starts following Fiona and reaches the training place. Here, Fiona defeats the chess champion of Robert's class and becomes the new champion. Shortly after, Naku arrives there and takes away Fiona and Brian, threatening Robert to stay away from her children. The next day, Robert visits Naku and informs her about the advantages of playing chess. He further explains that her children are very good at the game. He also promises to admit the kids to a new school after they're back from the tournament. This finally convinces Naku, who agrees to send her kids to the tournament happening at King's College. The scene then shifts to the kids getting into a van for their journey to King's College. The kids are taken aback after they see the beautiful college and the students wearing similar uniforms. However, they're also scared as they've never been out of the slums. At night, they can't sleep on thick mattresses as they're not used to it. Hence, they decide to sleep together on the floor. Their nervousness is seen the next day too, as they hesitate to face their opponents. Robert arrives in their room to console them and motivates them with one of his usual stories. He tells them that the city students are playing the game just for fun, but slum kids are playing the tournament to change their lives. Hearing this, the kids get motivated and they set out to face their opponents. 
The tournament begins, and even though the slum kids seem afraid, they continue to play their games. Fiona is paired with one of the champions of the tournament. Shortly after, one of the slum kids named Benjamin checkmates his opponent. This sparks confidence inside every player. They face their opposition valiantly, and after some time, Fiona wins the game against the former champion and eventually wins the tournament. She is awarded with a gold medal, and Robert and other kids are ecstatic for her. As they're about to head home, Fiona still cannot believe that she actually defeated a city boy from school. Back in Katwe, Robert introduces Fiona to Hope, who is also a school teacher. He then asks his wife to teach Fiona how to read books. Later that day, Fiona and Brian are selling maize in the market. While they're playing with a toy, Brian gets called by a man from the other side of the road. As he tries to cross the road, he gets hit by a motorcycle. Fiona immediately rushes to pick Brian up and somehow takes him to the hospital. As the family has no money to pay for the medical expenses, Naku quietly sneaks Brian out of the hospital the next day. When they return home, they find their landlady at the entrance asking for their rent. As a result, they're compelled to leave the house and stay at the roadside. That night, Fiona's sister visits them and hands Fiona some money for food. At this moment, Fiona does not feel like playing chess and stays with her mother. After some days, Robert visits Fiona and brings some food for her family. He asks Fiona to play a game with her, but she easily gives up and loses the game. Seeing her demotivated, Robert suggests that she should never underestimate herself and should keep on fighting till the last bit. He also stresses that she has a great talent and should never let it go to waste. The next day, Brian and Fiona are back to their training class and everyone is happy to see them. Shortly after, Fiona starts practicing in various tournaments and wins most of them. After getting some money, their family shifts to a new place. One day, Robert gets a call where he's informed that the Slum Kids, aka the Pioneer Kids, are invited for the International Chess Championship happening in Sudan. Excited, he breaks the news to his wife, Hope, who supports and encourages him to take Fiona to the tournament. In the next scene, Fiona, Robert, and two other pioneers, Ivan and Benjamin, can be seen in a plane, ready for Sudan. Inside, they're both excited and nervous as it's their first flight. After reaching there, they practice their moves with the other students, where Fiona gets to know that one can even get paid for playing games. After some challenging rounds, Robert and his team win the tournament and become famous throughout Katwe. Fiona, Ivan, and Benjamin seem to like the place and the food there. They're also very intrigued by the environment in Sudan. After they return home, Fiona refuses to do any household chores as she now feels superior. Shortly after, Naku visits Robert and tells him that Fiona has changed after she came back from Sudan. Hearing this, Robert tries to explain that Fiona now needs a special master for her further training. As Fiona's ego gets bigger, she desires to participate in the chess Olympiad happening in Russia. Robert and the other members of the Chess Federation think that Fiona is not ready for such a big event, but she thinks otherwise. In fact, her mind has been corrupted with money, which she thinks she can win at the Olympiad. In the next scene, Robert takes Fiona to the Olympiad, representing Uganda. There, chess masters from all around the world have gathered to compete against each other. In the tournament, Fiona is pitted against an opponent from Canada. Seeing her overconfidence, Robert warns her to watch carefully before putting forward any moves. Despite Robert's suggestions, Fiona hurries to win the game and as a result, she places some wrong moves and eventually loses the game. Devastated by the loss, Fiona approaches her coach and tells him that she's bad at the game and only knows how to sell maize in her slum. Instead of being disappointed, Robert motivates her by mentioning that losing is part of the game and she should learn from her mistakes. The scene then shifts to Katwe, where Fiona has returned to her regular life with her family. Robert is also offered a job as an engineering supervisor from a company, but he refuses to go there. He feels like he should help the children of the slums to uplift their living standard. When he tells Hope about his decision, she supports him and is happy to help the children. One day, there's a heavy rainfall and Fiona's house is filled with water. Night has again gone out, leaving the younger brother alone. Fiona, Brian, and Naku are also out selling maize, while Richard is being swept away by water. However, he manages to stay still, holding a rope. When Naku arrives home after the rain stops, she finds Richard grabbing the rope. Seeing this tragic situation of her family, Fiona goes to Robert's house and asks him if she could stay there for some days. 
Robert immediately agrees to her request. Later, he also admits Fiona, Brian, and some other students to a school under his expenses. Time passes by, and now Fiona has started playing like a champion. She easily defeats her coach, Robert, within a few moves. Robert says that she should participate in the Rawabushinyi National Chess Championship, where top players and masters from all around the world compete against each other. He also makes Fiona realize about the sacrifices her mother has made for her. The next day after school, Fiona goes to see her mother in the market, and Naku becomes very happy to see her wearing a school uniform. Naku then approaches Robert and thanks him for everything that he's done for her family. Robert also returns the gesture by mentioning that Fiona and Brian are extremely lucky to have a mother like her. The scene then shifts to the Rawa Bushinyi Chess Championship, where Fiona enters to play against Christine for the final round of the women's category. Fiona's mother and the Pioneer Kids are also there to support her. Soon, the match begins and Fiona and Christine play their first moves. At first, Fiona seems to be confused and tangled by Christine's moves, but when Robert gives her some confidence, she gains back her composure and returns to the game. She then makes some moves, trapping Christine from all sides. Finally, she checkmates Christine and wins the Roi Bushinyi National Chess Championship. The victory sends Robert and Fiona's family into a state of frenzy. When Fiona returns back to Katwe, she gets a grand welcome by the local people. She has now become a symbol of hope for women in Uganda. At last, it is shown that a biography book has been written on the life of Fiona, and she has earned an attractive sum from it. Fiona then takes her mother to another place where she has bought a large house. The movie ends as a proud Naku cries tears of joy as she gazes over the new house. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it.